welcome to Mentally Stronger, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strengths and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Melly O'Brien, co-founder of Mindfulness.com and creator of mindfulness-based mental strength training. I'm so glad to have you with me. Let's dive in to today's episode. I am on episode 31 and I am loving doing this podcast and getting all of the feedback that I'm getting from you all about how these practices are helping you. So yeah, if you are out there and you've been following along with this podcast so far and you've been you know, training your mind week by week to be stronger, I really hope you have felt the positive effects firsthand in your life. And this week is a week where I think you're going to find this practice really helpful because today we're going to be looking at becoming non-reactive and I'm going to be sharing with you a, a really wonderful and practical evidence-based technique that you can use to stay calmer, clearer and mentally stronger in those moments where you feel reactive, where you get really triggered. This is where the rubber really meets the road in terms of mental strength, because it's often in these moments where we get caught up in strong emotions, we get triggered, we get reactive. This is where we need to find our center the most. This is where we really need our mental strength the most, right? This is where we're getting really tested and pushed to our limits. So here's the thing, when you feel threatened or scared, in any way, a part of the brain called the amygdala automatically activates the fight or flight response. Whether it's a, a rude comment from someone, if someone pulls out in front of you in traffic, a misfortune, an argument. So if you've ever had the experience, like most of us have, where you've ever felt such a strong emotional reaction that you felt kind of out of control and reactive, this happens because the part of your brain that controls your ability to reason and think clearly and objectively, the frontal lobes of your brain actually gets hijacked when strong emotions like fear, anxiety, or anger trigger the brain's fight or flight response. Why do we have this in our brains? Well, early humans were exposed to the constant threat of being harmed or killed by wild animals or other tribes. So to improve the chances of survival, the fight or flight response evolved. It's an automatic response to physical danger that allows you to react quickly without thinking at all. So it sends out signals to release stress hormones into your body. They flood through your body and prepare you to run or fight as quickly as possible. So what the amygdala does in this process is it disables the brain's frontal lobes, the more evolved or what some people refer to as the smart part of our brain. Now, when that happens, you can no longer think clearly, make rational decisions or control your responses because control has been hijacked by the amygdala. So, of course, it makes sense that fight or flight happens in response to direct threats but it can also be triggered by psychological threats when we think worrying or anxious thoughts as well. But there is a powerful way that we can train in calming the amygdala and bringing the frontal lobes back online when we're feeling triggered or overwhelmed or distressed. To do this, we practice mentally naming the emotion that we're experiencing, or as psychiatrist uh, Dan Siegel likes to say, we can name it to tame it. So research shows that by mentally noting or mentally labeling a difficult emotion as it arises, you can experience up to a 50% reduction in the intensity of that emotion. Not only that, but perhaps more importantly, it brings the brain's frontal lobes back online so that we can become less reactive 
to what's happening around us and think more clearly again. So instead of reacting and just saying and doing things we might regret later, now we can respond, right? We can bring those frontal lobes back online and then respond with calm, effectiveness and clarity. You can speak wisely, act deliberately and stay cool under pressure. So this is a really, really useful thing to be able to apply in daily life in all kinds of situations, ranging from traffic jams to an argument with your spouse to handling a difficult customer or co-worker. So by labeling an emotion in this way, what we're actually doing here is we're creating a little bit of mental space, right? Usually when a very strong emotion arises, we get so caught up in it and so identified with the emotion that it takes us over. We lose perspective, we lose ourselves in it. But by recognizing strong emotions when they arise and mentally naming it, we create this kind of inner space where we take a step back from the emotion and we start to be able to observe it in a different way. Then we can respond to what's happening instead of reacting. So just to be clear, this is not about getting rid of the emotions. It's about unhooking yourself from it so that you're still able to act with awareness, effectiveness, wisdom, and mental strength, despite the emotion being present. So here's how you can start using this in your life today. The next time you feel the surge of a strong emotion, whether it be sadness, fear, anger, or shame, just try taking a deep, slow breath to calm your nervous system in and out. And then you mentally name the emotion. So just mentally saying to yourself, okay, anger is here. Or, okay, fear is here. Or sadness is here. Or whatever the emotion is, just naming it. Now, this is sounding probably deceptively simple. But with this one very, very simple practice, you can develop your capacity to find your center and strength in difficult moments and take more wise and effective action. So when you have a difficult conversation with a loved one and you feel anger arising, you're able to just take a small pause before saying something you might later regret. Or when anxiety arises, when you're just about to ask someone on a date or do a presentation, it helps you to collect yourself and observe that fear or anxiety without letting it take control so you can still do what really matters to you deep in your heart. The more we practice noticing our emotions without being triggered by them or caught up in them, the more able we are to stay grounded in awareness and the qualities that come with it, like wisdom, calm and resilience. So I really encourage you to give this practice a try this week and just see how it goes for you. Do an experiment and just see how this affects you in your own body, mind and life. And if it's effective for you, you can use this in your mental strength toolkit for life. All right, I hope this is helpful for you. Wishing you a wonderful week and I will look forward to being back here with you for the next Mentally Stronger podcast. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally strong, come over to the website and check out the different coaching and training options I have on offer there for you. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.